Hey everyone, it's Amanda of Merciful Mermaid Tarot, and today I'm bringing you a general reading for the month of January for the element of water. So this is a new format. I'm trying a new approach to general collective readings. Um, I think the elements are great energies to work with for getting general readings because uh, I think the best thing a general reading can offer a collective is a new idea framework or, you know, a perspective for looking at issues and their situations. And since we all have the 12 signs of the zodiac in our birth chart, and are influenced by all the elements in some way, um, I figured it's a good approach. So um, if you'd like to find out more about that and how these readings will work, I have a quick video that I made a couple of days ago about my new approach to collective readings, and I'll link that video down below if you'd like to have a look at it. So uh, one last thing, please do keep in mind that these readings are for entertainment purposes only. So I never offer advice, just perspectives and ideas for you to explore and think about. So without any more delay, we're going to get into this month's messages. Now, these are not pertaining to the signs. This is just the water element itself. So what I do is I basically get into sort of a meditative state and try and connect with the element. And then I basically write down whatever's coming through to me. So for water signs this month, we have, um, you know, less talking about what you will do and more doing, more taking action on the ideas you've been having. So you may have a lot of ideas, like too many ideas, right? So you're encouraged to pick something and commit to it. Find somewhere to write your ideas down. Um, if, you're have, if you're highly creative, you will probably have a lot of different concepts, sketches, rough drafts, and so on, and that's good. So get them all out on paper. Pick maybe two and dedicate time to them, maybe, you know, the next couple of months. So the problem here is the fact that there's a lack of trust in staying the course and following through. So you need to instill trust in yourself. And to do that, you will need to improve your ability to see something through to completion in the long term. And that can be difficult for uh, water signs that got water energy to getting caught up in heavy emotions. Water energy can be very heavy and sort of pull us down when what we're looking for is motivation to move forward. So when you experience your own ability to stay the course and bring an idea from your mind to a concrete reality, you start to actually have more faith in yourself. And as a creative, as any creative person um, knows, there's nothing more stressful and demotivating than a bunch of unfinished projects, right? So this is about proving to yourself that you can actually stay the course and follow through instead of, um, you know, with the water energy this month, there's a lot of uh, conversations happening, particularly for people who um, have a lot of uh, water placements or um, uh, water, the water element is a strong influence in your birth chart, or you just find that you often resonate with the qualities and energies of, of the water element. So... Another thing is stop treating all of your feelings like an accurate reflection of reality. It requires you to stop and sit down with them or take action based on them. So every emotion or change in mood does not need to signal a loss of motivation, okay? And, um, or an end to your current project. So many times you can just let your emotions be while, while you continue with your actual plans. So don't give your emotions the power to get you sidetracked, right? Uh, I think what the water energy tends to do that a lot. It's why people who tend to have a lot of water in their chart don't manifest as much as others. And this is something that I can relate to because I have an extremely water heavy chart and ex extremely Pisces uh, heavy Pisces stellium chart. And that can, uh, that is one sign that becomes very easily discouraged or often the idea stays in the mind or is talked about or you know it's oh i'm gonna do this and i'm i'm totally gonna do that and then it just doesn't happen right it's i i always find that the other element energies have an easier time with manifesting it's just something i've observed uh, so taking our feelings too seriously too much of the time so every feeling does not mean that you're doing something wrong or you're on the wrong course 
or that, um, you know, you, you're, you're not following your calling or your passion, that you're off track. That is not, we, I think water, the water heavy charts, people tend to take their emotions as uh, always an indication of what is going on. And sometimes feelings are what we call just transient. We, we all have mood swings and nobody uh, well, not mood swings, but we all have shifting emotions and nobody is happy 100% of the time, okay? So keep that in mind. And sometimes what I will do is if I'm have in a bad mood and there's something I want to accomplish, I give myself that permission to just continue with it, that this change in mood does not have to alter the activity I'm engaged in right now. I don't need to. It's it, the a... Uh, uh, Difficult or negative emotion does not mean, you know, stop, you're not on the right track. And I think uh, with water heavy charts, we need to move away from thinking that way. It's not that uh, water signs maybe feel, t they feel too much, but they also take their feelings too seriously as, in, in a sense. And the last thing for water energy in general, um, is to be brave about trusting and following through on what you already know about other people. Stop trying to talk yourself into seeing the good in them if the bad is already causing you a lot of grief, okay? Don't just ignore that. And I find with uh, water energy, with the emotions and feeling strong connections to people perhaps too early on or forming, um, you know, being emotionally invested in somebody when... At, at, at the same time, we are picking up on something's not right here, or our our body is trying to alert us to the fact that something is um, something needs our attention. That maybe we're not safe with this person, you know, something um, maybe not a fully formed thought or feeling in the moment, but it's it's a red flag or sort of an inner alarm goes off. So we need we need to stop ignoring that and. Um, really look at some of the friendships and connections we're making this year. And like I said, the, these messages can apply to any anyone, but especially look at where you have water placements in your chart, okay? And see if any of what I just said can tie into the areas of your chart where there's a lot of water energy happening. Look at the houses and look at the planets that are there and see what is going on. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do these general readings. I mean, I know somebody who, uh, Tony of The Abstractionist, also enter Red Room. Those are her two YouTube channels. She reads according to planets, right? So, um, you know, Mars, Venus readings, um, you know, there's a Mercury reading, the sun, the moon, and that's her approach. And she has, she just feels drawn to working with collective energies in that way. So that's great too. Um, definitely check out her channel and see if that's also a good fit for you, you know? So, okay. So for the next part of this reading, what I like to do is sort of elaborate on those ideas that came up in that reading. So we have, you know, following through and discipline. I'm going to be using the Wild Unknown Tarot. This is the newer edition where they they remade the Justice card. I'm not sure if it comes up, you'll get to see that. But um, yeah, so I'm going to pull a couple of cards here and see if we can elaborate on those themes. So we have things like um, actually following through, taking uh, ideas from the dream and, you know, sort of daydreaming thinking, planning, stage two, actual manifestation. We have uh, not taking feelings too seriously, you know, not allowing, not allowing your emotions to run your life. And then we also have, tr uh, of course, this comes up a lot with water energy is trusting your, um, your instinct about people. Sometimes it's like a, a sixth sense, right? So let's see what is coming up here. So we have... So the daughter of cups, right? Here we go. So this is this is perfect. This really does speak to sort of an emotional learning here. So let's see what else we get. I'm going to pull maybe two or three and see what 
comes up. We have the chariot. This is interesting because, again, the chariot speaks to our journey through life staying on track and the possibility of staying the course or being derailed, right? Whereas the daughter of cups is the novice in the world of uh, emotions, intuition, creativity, things like that. So this is lining up so far. Sometimes these things can be a little eerily accurate, so we'll see. And we have the Son of Pentacles. Okay, so this is pretty interesting. What I will say is we have the, the Son of Pentacles here and the Daughter of Cups. So this really speaks to, you know, the ideas that are in their infancy. Uh, taking that to the realm of the material and actually seeing how you can manifest these things. So one thing that's coming to me right away is with the Son of Pentacles, it's sort of like, I believe those are the Knight cards and the Daughters, I believe, are the Page. Um, so... The chariot being a major arcana energy, this means it's a very uh, overarching major theme, a major chapter in your life that's happening at this point. So this is definitely speaking about, you know, maybe you're feeling kind of stuck. You're feeling like if there's a lot of water energy going on that you do constantly feel like there's this, it could be the weight of the water could be baggage. It could emotional baggage. It could be, um, you know, self-defeating thoughts, things like that. Like there's, there's a feeling here of, of you being the one that holds yourself back, so to speak. So with the daughter of cups, it's sort of, you know, we see this bird here that's rather plain and then but her reflection has uh colors in it here so it's almost like seeing the potential in the water like on on the surface we see the potential in our ideas but then we don't take them to the uh, because it's just a reflection right so it's a reflection of um perhaps with water what could be and with the son of pentacles this is asking you to take action too so start to gather the materials because it's very easy to sort of just stay in the fantasy dreamland sort of thinking about it and never doing it. So the Son of Pentacles is being the knight. We're going out and we're starting to gather what we need. We're starting to actually um, put a dent in, our, in, in the work of carrying out our plan, right? And um, with the heavy water energy, we can find a lot of reasons to not do that. So I'm just going to see if I can get a clarifying card here. And this is interesting. So we have the Ace of Swords. Now, with the Ace of Swords, I see this as being sort of a... In the realm of the mind, this is air energy. This is like a the breakthrough kind of an opportunity to... Um, and what's interesting is I'm picking up that there may have been opportunities that came and... You didn't take them and you're sitting with regret now. I feel this would be quite recent for some of you. So, um, and opportunities do come and go. We have this, you know, this ongoing kind of um, flow here. And the Ace of Swords is really asking you to get your, you know, uh, if if any opportunities come up, sometimes we need to jump in even if we're scared of doing the thing and just just do it. Right, And the Ace of Swords is basically asking us to get right in our mindset by doing that, by putting ourselves in a position that uh, forces us to sort of overcome this mental, this stagnation of, you know, just keeping dreams as dreams and moving them to the realm of starting to actually manifest. So when you start to interact with the world around you, speaking to the right people, gathering the right tools, maybe Son of Pentacles means investing in something, training or education or um, something, you know, a workshop, anything, maybe some tools for a new hobby, some better equipment so that you are, um, you know, investing in uh, better quality production and manifestation. Maybe you're like me making videos, trying to start a channel or get, get your, you know, get your work out there some, somehow. It's just thinking about it obviously is not going to make that happen. There has to be 
practical steps and the son of pentacles being the knight i mean i think the energy of this reading is recognizing that a lot of um this this is feels like a very heavy stagnant water energy and so you're being called to actually start start to make a dent in reality in the material in the physical world start to leave your mark is what it's saying you know and with the chariot card here this is indicating that getting out of this stagnancy is going to be essential for your journey and i believe this is in fact uh, is this year a seven, so 2023, so um, two and two and three, that's adding up to seven, so that is a seven year, this is the chariot year, so if, if, and, and this is true for me as well, I have struggled with this in the past, and I sometimes feel like I have to push myself and be more self-motivated even than, than uh, some people, and that may ne not necessarily be true. It might just feel that way because, again, we're dealing with emotions. The chariot card indicates that this is a turning point for many of us. It's sort of a now or never. Are you going to sit and stagnate and just spend the next several months with this as, a, as an idea that's just in, in a notebook or just a sketch on paper or just, you know, a, a plan that you've typed up or something that you've written and then you you just don't go any further beyond that because there's fear there um that that is the essence of what these cards are communicating here so there's really no way around it besides uh and water energy too if you have a very i have a very water heavy chart and i do not have a lot of earth energy grounding energy so that indicates that for, and if that's true for any of you, it might be that the real world, the, the mundane world is a very uncomfortable place and staying in your imagination is your comfort zone. And this reading is basically saying, now is the time to get out of that because there is going to come a point where there's going to be a lot of regret. This is a very self-defeating sort of energy. And I think, and I would say especially with Pisces. Pisces tend to be, um, they're called at times the sign of self undoing. I've heard that before. And with Cancer, Cancers like to stay with what is uh, familiar and safe. It's about the home and family and things like that. What, what we know, familiarity. So water sign energy can really, it can be difficult to break out of. It's very heavy emotions. It's very um, feeds fear and um, really the thing that, that you're the most afraid to do is the thing that needs to be done and that's the engagement with the with the real world and what it's going to require of you to manifest that reality. It needs to be done because you don't want to let the decades pass by and think, well, I could have done this or I could have done that because that is going to be really the most painful, emotionally painful reality of all when you realize that you did not follow through or bring any of these plans to fruition. You can no longer comfort yourself by saying, oh, well, you know, I'm talented. I know what I what I need to do. I just have to do it. And, and you know, you can't um, rest on your potential forever. So there will be regrets if, if this pattern continues. And um, what better card than the card numerologically uh, tying in with 2023? Okay, so that's all for now. Um, once again, this is my first time doing this type of reading. So I will have uh, another one posted shortly with the next element, which is the fire element. So I'll see you all in the next video and thank you for watching.